Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. recording a couple of videos because I'm away a lot of this summer and I just wanted to be able to provide you with some stuff after a couple of weeks of hiatus so um, hopefully they will be enjoyable and they'll kind of be relevant for like a long time it's not just like what I'm doing now it's kind of this is how I've lived my life or these are some of my favorite stuff so it's gonna be like a small mini series of um, me I guess <laughs> it is my channel after all this one was inspired by Natasha Ossian who does these amazing amazing videos that are all evidence-based, um, a lot of fitness stuff, so if you enjoy uh, science-based fitness content go over to her channel because she is amazing and a massive inspiration when it comes to how to train like an athlete rather than just for aesthetics. I'm gonna do a video today on 10 habits that kind of changed my life which sounds super dramatic but I guess they did over time actually change the way that I live my life and for that reason um, I'm giving it that incredibly clickbaity title. I don't really know how deep we're gonna go but let's start with the first one. The first one is to celebrate the small things. Now this came about when I was way younger when I I was a massive pessimist. I was one of the most pessimistic people I can possibly imagine. I remember my parents basically told me that from the age of five, we were like people watching on a bridge one day and I was just pointing at the people and my parents said, what? And I just said, don't they all know that they're gonna die? And that was basically me summed up as a child, incredibly pessimistic, um, focusing on the negative things. Now, as an adult, I do feel like I'm very, very optimistic in my everyday life. I celebrate the small things. I celebrate literally like a sunny day or a nice smelling coffee or like whatever it is. And that came about through starting something called the Gratitude Journal. And I actually think there's quite a lot of scientific evidence to back up the powers of a gratitude journal. And what it is, is at the end of every day, you write down three or five things that happened that day that you're grateful for or that you're just grateful for in general. It can be really Really tiny things and as a pessimist it's probably gonna be quite difficult on a really bad day to actually think of anything that you're really grateful for that day but for me it could have been something like today was sunny today I aced my geography class like whatever it is and that over time retrains your brains to instead of thinking of the negative of a situation you actually start to think of the positive and that just changed my life literally that changed my life I think I went from being someone who was generally quite in tune to the negatives of any situation to someone who even in the worst of situations would tend to find some sort of positive so that has to be my number one thing number two if it is going to take less than two minutes do it now. This is a productivity thing, um, but has also helped in various other aspects of my life. It's just about not postponing stuff that, you know, could really take no time at all. So whether that's washing up your dishes or popping something in the post box or whatever it is, it, it is something that you just, for some reason, put off for so long and it really isn't gonna take very long, but I feel like we're all so busy in our everyday life that these tiny little admin tasks that are just kind of faffy but small just never get done. I would just do it. It also helps, you know, if you're gonna be, if you're running to the post box, you get in your steps, you get outside, you get a little bit of activity. Like there are all benefits to these sorts of things. So yeah, that has to be a really good one. If it takes less than two minutes, do it now. Number three, get outside. When you're really depressed as I was when I was literally throughout my teenage years you tend to kind of or a lot of people tend to keep themselves inside keep themselves quite insular they don't necessarily want to be going out and seeing the world I found that getting outside was also like kind of ironically the perfect antidote to that for me getting outside lifts my mood um, again there's a lot of scientific evidence to back this up being in nature is really good for you it lowers anxiety it lowers your blood pressure it can um, act as a mild antidepressant so yeah if you're if you've only got 10 minutes and you need to do something at lunchtime rather than just sitting there scrolling through instagram get outside get some sunshine get some rain doesn't really matter just get outside into the fresh air and try and take in the nature around you number four learning to cook this was actually quite funny when i was younger i've been pescatarian since i was four years of age and both my parents are avid meat eaters and I remember my mom saying to me when I was maybe nine years old nine ten years old if you want something different from what the rest of us are having you need to learn how to cook so I was just like sure 
fine. And that is kind of, I mean, look at me now, I'm a food and fitness blogger, so um, clearly it worked. She actually basically set me up for life. Now I love, absolutely love cooking. Now I don't mean you have to learn how to be like a Michelin star chef. That is obviously not gonna happen for the vast majority of people, but learning how to cook really basic meals, um, you know, a stir fry, a lasagna, veggie lasagna preferably, or you know, whatever it is, there are some really simple meals that you can cook in a really short space of time. And in terms of your health, that's really positive. But also I think it's just like a really good skill to have. For me, a stir fry or a curry tends to be like my favorite go-to meal, but also I love pasta, ratatouille, like that kind of stuff as well. Five, never stop learning. I have always been a massive nerd. I've always been really interested in science and books. I refused to read any fiction when I was younger. I just read the encyclopedia over and over again. So that basically sums me up. I haven't changed very much. I don't do as much reading now, but I consume a lot of media in the form of podcasts, educational podcasts. I like to watch documentaries and also when I can read, when I have time to read, I tend to read non-fiction instead of fiction or fiction based on non-fictional events. So I think that learning is incredibly important, but it's also a part of my identity, which is why I like to do it so much. Number six, move every day. I have to say this is a fitness blogger because it is my job, but I also think that moving is so positive for your mind. It's so positive for your body um, and just in everyday life. It can, I mean, it can combine with a lot of the other things, like it combined with getting outside or, you know, doing your tasks that take less than two minutes. These are all things that you can combine them together and, and you get this positive effect. And I think like once you start to incorporate multiple different things that are beneficial for your mind and your body, everything else starts to kind of fall into place a little bit. It takes time obviously, but these are all things I've incorporated over time that have massively helped me. Even if it's not going to the gym, I like to go for a walk. Um, I'm actually gonna go for a walk after this because I've been inside for a little bit too long today. You know, going for a walk, doing a yoga class, just having a bit, bit of a stretch, having a boogie in your house doing doing the tidying doing the washing up like all of these things uh, count as movement it doesn't have to be a gym class it can be kind of whatever you find interesting and fun yeah move every day seven learn how to sleep this sounds crazy doesn't everyone know how to sleep uh no many people are incredibly bad at sleeping and that causes a lot of problems i think the average amount that i can't remember if it's us or uk uh, sleeps per night is something like 6.7 hours which is too low it's not enough enough sleep for most people to get and I've spoken a lot about this on previous episodes um, because sleep is a massive part of my life but I used to have insomnia when I was doing my A-levels which was not ideal and uh, I had to take sleeping pills and also that was not ideal because it meant that I'd wake up in the morning with like a sleeping pill hangover and I was just incapable I would just like forget everything up to lunchtime which as you can imagine during your A-levels is not ideal having a good sleep-wake cycle has transformed my life I think before I didn't realize what it was like to feel as good as I do now on most days, which is why I didn't really, I wasn't really fussed that much about sleep. I was like, you know what, I'm just kind of fine. But evidence suggests that we think that we're fine on less sleep, but actually our bodies are functioning at a lower level, which means that we're not even able to detect how much worse we're performing. So it's kind of like, a double-edged sword you you get the negative but you get the negative effects and then you can't even see the negative effects that's how tired you are learning how to sleep is massively important for me I need kind of eight and a half nine hours of sleep a night which is crazy I'm hoping that will go down as I get older but for many people it's sort of between seven and nine hours sleep is super important and especially sleep before 11 p.m. is incredibly important for various reasons it is thought that sleep before midnight is more important than sleep after midnight so I don't know if that's just because they studied like it might be a bias in terms of like studying night owls versus morning larks but in general if you can get enough sleep and try to go to sleep earlier it's probably going to be a good thing eight take care of health this is such a general note to myself but taking care of health has been transformative in my life i mean i used to smoke it's probably still way back on my instagram somewhere i used to drink a considerable amount more than i do now i drink now but not a huge amount and I would work out but it would be for all the wrong reasons and I would do it in totally the wrong way and that wasn't just a lack of education that was me wanting to lose as much weight as possible and that the reason that I was working out was totally not because I love working out as I do now. Now taking care of my health involves little things like a couple of times a week just cooking a meal with as many different types of veg in as possible you know working out at least three times a week, especially like trying to get in some weights because I do a lot of walking anyway, but strength training is really important to me and has had, 
has helped me in many different ways, including getting nice shoulders. Um, <laughs> just various different things. Taking care of health has been integral to kind of creating this sort of person that I am today and obviously as a fitness blogger it it makes sense that it's that way but I think it has impacted my other things like productivity and positivity mental health in general that they, they all go in hand in hand number nine has to be calling people on the phone actually picking up the phone and speaking to them I first started this well actually I used to go to boarding school so I first started it way back when I was about eight nine years old when I would call my parents from the payphone in my boarding house and continued from there actually I haven't stopped calling people I'm constantly on the phone when I'm walking places and my four-year relationship with my boyfriend the latter two years has been long distance so also I you know I would go on my lunch walk and I would call him at the same time and having that conversation and being able to hear their voice as opposed to just sort of messaging maybe missing a couple of things over text makes all the difference um when you're not seeing someone face to face and I think also it is just you get that kind of dopamine hit um or is it oxytocin I don't know you get some sort of endorf uh, endorphin hit or like positivity from that conversation and and that just leaves you in a really good mood and I know a lot of people who have started to do this as well and, and have found the same thing. Last but not least is keeping a diary to stay organized. I used to be the most disorganized person you will have ever met in your entire life. <laughs> I mean I was always late to everything um, and I blame my mum for that entirely but also I would lose money when it was in my hand. I would leave my gloves somewhere, I'd leave my hat somewhere, I'd just leave everything everywhere and I was just incredibly disorganized and I know that this kind of goes with a lot of artistic people you know your brain just works in a way that isn't necessarily like rigid organization but now as you get you know as you get busier I, I find it quite important to have a diary where you can kind of meticulously plan your day and I think especially as someone who's freelance planning in things like a rest day or an evening off or whatever it is is really important because otherwise we can get the urge to continue working because the more work you put in seemingly the more you get out of it which is true to an extent but it is possible to overwork and having a diary and, and scheduling in kind of literally everything has been massively beneficial to me although it might not be the same for everyone but yeah I am now really really quite organized that has really helped my kind of professional life as well as my personal life and also just decreasing stress like once I know what I'm doing during the week I feel much happier because I know that everything's going to fit in and there's a little bit of leeway for things to go wrong as well. That is it. I hope you found that enjoyable. Nice and short-ish. And yeah, I would love to know the sorts of things that you find have helped your life in the past and also now and your organization and your health. Everything. Just tell me it all. And if you did enjoy this, please do like and subscribe. And I would love to see you over on my Instagram as well. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.